think about the person you talk to the most. Now, what if I told you that person is you? Yes, you heard it right. We're our own constant companions and the words we utter to ourselves have a profound impact. Let me take you back a few years when I was struggling with low self-esteem. It was like walking with a heavy cloud over my head every day. My interactions with people were stilted, my performance at work was subpar, and my zest for life was dwindling. Then, one day, I found myself standing in front of the mirror, realizing the destructive conversation I was constantly having with myself. I knew I had to turn things around, and so I embarked on a journey of self-discovery and self-improvement. I began reading, researching, and experimenting with different ways to boost my self-esteem. It was a journey filled with ups and downs, but each step I took was a step closer to a more confident, happier me. And guess what? The steps I use to build my self-esteem are the ones I'm about to share with you. Improving self-esteem is not a one-time fix, but a continuous process. Let's start the journey. The first step to boosting your self-esteem is practicing self-compassion. Renowned psychologist Dr. Christine Neff describes self-compassion as being kind to ourselves, recognizing our common humanity and being mindful of our emotions. Remember, everyone has moments of self-doubt and you're not alone in this journey. Next, set achievable goals. Psychologist Edwin Locke's goal-setting theory emphasizes the motivational power of setting goals that are specific and challenging yet attainable. It's not about climbing the highest mountain, but taking one step at a time and celebrating each accomplishment. The third step is silencing negative self-talk. Cognitive therapist Dr. David Burns highlights the importance of challenging and changing negative thought patterns. When you catch yourself thinking, I can't, ask yourself why not and replace it with I can try. Step four is about engaging in activities that bring joy. Positive psychologist Dr. Martin Seligman believes that engaging in activities we love can lead to a state of flow where we're so absorbed in the task that we lose track of time, boosting our mood and self-esteem. Now on to the fifth step, caring for your body. As Dr. Goy Winch, author of Emotional First Aid, points out, physical and mental health are intertwined. Regular exercise, a balanced diet, and adequate sleep are essential for maintaining a positive mindset. The sixth step is setting boundaries with negativity. Dr. Judith Orloff, a psychiatrist and empath expert, advises on the importance of creating boundaries to protect ourselves from negativity. This might mean distancing from toxic relationships or saying no when necessary. Lastly, remember that improving self-esteem is an ongoing process. As Dr. Carl Rogers, a pioneer in humanistic psychology, stated, the good life is a process, not a state of being. It's about progress, not perfection. Remember, these steps are not a magic wand. They require consistency, patience, and most importantly, self-love. Now take a moment, reflect on your self-esteem. Are you being kind to yourself? As we journey through life, it's easy to forget the importance of self-care and self-love. But remember, self-esteem isn't a destination. It's a journey. It's a continual process of growth, learning and understanding. Think about the seven steps we've discussed. How can you apply them in your life? Maybe you'll start by setting achievable goals or perhaps you'll focus on silencing that negative self-talk. Each step you take, no matter how small, is a victory on your journey to improved self-esteem. And this journey, it's not a race. It's okay to take your time to stumble, to learn and grow at your own pace. 
the important thing is that you're making the effort, that you're moving forward. And remember, there's no perfect level of self-esteem. It's about feeling comfortable in your own skin, about acknowledging your worth. You are your longest commitment. So, start treating yourself with the love and respect you deserve, because you are enough just as you are.